Welcome back. Frontier Democracy. Earlier this week, James and I sat down with Daybreak's resident historian to learn how justice was given for crimes committed in the late 1800s. This week in Alaska history, an archbishop is murdered at an Alaskan fish camp. The year 1886, no sheriffs, no judges back then. So how would justice be served? Well, in this week's story time with Ann Phil, author Laurel Downing Bill tells us about the Miner's Code, then the only law in the land. Good morning, Laurel. Good morning. Welcome back to the couch. So 130 years ago, to this form of frontier democracy known as the Miner's Code. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the miners would come together if they had an issue of common concern. So if someone was accused of doing something wrong, then they would get together and they would um, appoint a sheriff and they would appoint a judge. And then the defendant and the plaintiff would both uh, give their sides of the stories. And then the miners would get together and decide who they thought was telling the truth. And if it was a guilty verdict, then if it was like, for instance, robbing or something like that, they might get some punishment like whipping or banishment from the community. If it was murder, they would hang them right on the spot. Oh, wow. As we mentioned, one story in particular would really define the Miner's Code. And uh, it was to warn potential criminals that murder could lead to an all-expenses paid vacation to the federal penitentiary. So how does it all begin? Archbishop Charles John Sager, he was the Archbishop of Vancouver Island, back in 1886 was on his way back to Nulato after an eight-year absence. He'd been in Canada and he wanted to get right back to those natives that he had set up his missionary with. He traveled with two other priests, which they left at the confluence of the Yukon River and the Stewart River. And then Sager continued on with a layman by the name of Frank Fuller. And Frank had been showing signs of some mental instability. And the other priests who they left at this camp warned him, you know, you sure you want to continue? Um, we're not sure how this guy is reacting. And, and the archbishop was desperate to get back to Nulato because he'd promised the people he would be back. Not only that, he was in a rush because he didn't want to be replaced. Yeah. Is that true? He'd heard there was an Anglican priest who had arrived in St. Michael. And so, yes, but uh, worrying about somebody else infringing on his territory should have been the least of his worries at the time. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, what happened next? What happened to Fuller? Well, about a month later, they were camped, and they were about a day or so away from Nulato, I think. And uh, they got up in the morning, ready to push on, and Fuller just up and shot the archbishop dead in his tracks. Um, it, it was just a shock. <laughs> so the native men that were a couple guides taking them to Nolato, they switched gears and they took the body of the archbishop to St. Michael. Then they transported Fuller to the jail there. I was gonna say, this brings us back around to the miners' code now. How did they determine how justice would be served for him? Well, in this point, he actually had a trial, a regular trial. They did have a law and order in St. Michael. And he was sentenced to 10 years penitentiary in San Francisco. But not long enough for some. That's true. People talked about it and said, that's not much of a sentence, you know. And, and some man, uh, people thought about it and thought, gosh, you know, maybe murder would lead to an all expense paid trip to balmy California where you're getting your free food, your free clothes, a warm bed to sleep in. So one man took it further. He actually murdered another man in order to be sent to California. <laughs> But as it turned out, he murdered the fellow and he waited for the miners to show up. They did, and they held their miners' trial right there and then and convicted him. He was hanged on the spot to try and dissuade anybody else from thinking that they might get an all expense paid to sunny California. Sent a clear message, that's for sure. I know I would be dissuaded. <laughs> Another fantastic history lesson on this Thursday morning. Laurel, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.